Hello, doers, and welcome back. Today, we're managing our internal fleet of delivery trucks to make sure we're efficiently delivering our fresh veggies from our farm to our customers. That's right, we're getting pastoral and working at Odulicious, our family farm. We deliver to individual households and businesses, so depending on our order volume, we use a different kind of truck. That way, when we're loading items onto the truck, Odoo tracks the weight and the volume, making sure we're never taking too much on each delivery truck. Once the truck is all loaded, we can even use Odoo to automatically generate directions to the customer's delivery address. All right, I'm getting excited. Enough chit chat. Time to see what it looks like inside of the database. So to begin, we're actually going to enable some features inside of the inventory app. We're going to go to configuration and settings. So here we are in our operations section. We're going to want to make sure that batch wave and cluster transfers feature is enabled. This is used to prepare batches of orders for delivery. We're also going to go down lower over here to the shipping section. Make sure that dispatch management system is selected or DMS for my acronym lovers. So down further below over here in our warehouse section, we're going to want to make sure that both storage locations and multi-step routes are enabled so that we can define loading zones for our trucks inside of Odoo. Now, if you haven't enabled these, make sure you save. It's going to be my famous last words. So next, let's configure whether we want to deliver in one or two steps. So we use a two-step delivery if we have a specific output zone for loading items onto vehicles like Odulicious. This setup adds separate stock and output locations, ensuring outgoing items stay separate from storage. This way, one team moves shipments to a specific truck's output zone, and the truck loading team only needs to load that dock. And that means that the people loading our trucks won't go into our storage and grab the wrong things. In other words, the pickup truck guys won't accidentally take things intended for the cargo truck. So let's actually go configure that. We're going to go configure our warehouse settings by going to configuration and warehouses. If you look at that, we're going to select the sole Odulicious one. So since we have a loading zone that's separate from the rest of storage, we're going to select pick, then deliver two steps. And we already have it selected, but if you don't, make sure you pick it. Now let's set up these loading zones, shall we? So to do that, we're going to go once again to configuration, this time locations. The configuration menu is our favorite one today. So after setting outgoing shipments to two steps, the WH output location is automatically created over there. In the output zone, we have specific ones. We have both dock A and dock B, which are where we load packages onto the pickup truck and the cargo truck, respectively. I hope that visually helped you. So I'm going to select dock A to start. I need to make sure that this is a dock location box is ticked. So with these inventory features enabled, we'll have to make sure a detour into the fleet app to set up our delivery vehicles because we need to make sure it's all working properly. So let's head back on our dashboard. We're going to select fleet. And remember, you can also always just type and it'll just take you there once you hit enter. I'm going to go into configuration now and we're going to select categories over there. So here we can see all our vehicle categories. These categories specify the vehicle's capacity. Here we have both a pickup truck and we also have a cargo truck. Now the pickup truck for our example, well that takes fresh produce and coolers. It has a max weight of 60 kilograms as you can see over here and it can hold up to five cubic meters in volume of items. We also have now the cargo truck that I was talking about and that happens to be a max weight of 200 and a max volume of 40. So to change this unit of measurement, by the way, you'll have to change it globally in the company settings located in the general settings section of the settings application. And next, we actually want to make sure that the delivery vehicles are configured properly. So to do that, we're gonna actually go click on the word fleet and select fleet again. And then inside of here, we'll click the list icon on the far right to see the vehicles inside of a list view because it'll make it easier for me to go off of that. So now over here, we have our category field. We need to make sure each vehicle is assigned a category as we configured earlier. And look, one of them doesn't have a category yet. So let's go do that. We're going to select the Ford. All right. So I want you to look over here in our category field on the right hand side, and we need to select it. I happen to decide that this is a pickup truck because I know an F-150. So now I think it's time for us with all of this configuration out of the way to see this all in action inside of our inventory application. All right, so before you saw my beautiful face again, I actually confirmed five sales orders for various fresh and frozen products. Now doing that created these five picking operations that we have over here in our pick card. 
So let's click on them right there. Okay, if you remember, the pickup truck at dock A is good for individual orders, and the large cargo truck at dock B is good for B2B bulk orders. So when doing our pickings, we're already thinking about which dock we're going to bring each order to. But to easily identify the B2B orders from the list of pickings, we actually use a kind of clairvoyant orb. Just kidding, we use the search bar, and then we select the custom filter. Then from here, we're going to type in the word contact into the very first one. Don't select the word contact or this ends. We want to select the little arrow. Start typing again is a company, and this time you do select it. We don't need anything else, so we can just hit add. And would you look at that? It left us with our two specific pickings, which we're going to move from stock to hmm, another quick note. The picking automatically sets the destination location to be output. But this isn't specific enough for us because we need these products to dock B. So to fix that, we're going to select the checkboxes over here and we're going to click on the to field. And then we're going to select this nice little arrow over here and we're going to type in a dash. And would you look at that? We're going to select dock B. And now since we selected multiple in this pop-up, we want to select confirm. And since we're done, we're going to select the X on the two selected right there. And now we need to also remove the custom filter. I need the full list again. So up next, I'm going to check the boxes for the remaining ones. And you can find them because they won't have the hyper-specific dock location yet. And then once again, we're going to select our location, destination. We're going to select dock A for these ones. Confirm it. And we're done with that. All right. Now all of that. And with all of the pickings headed to the right dock, I think it's time for us to validate. So we're going to select our very first one. And we're going to validate. Whew. This is going to take us a little bit. I need to do that for the four other pickings, so I'm going to do that off screen and meet you back here to load the items onto those trucks. Hello again. Judging by the orders inside of our deliveries card over here, I can tell that all the orders have been moved to output. So I'm going to select on the five to deliver over here to take us to our list of pickings. And it's time to pick the products from our orders into batches. So I'm going to tick the checkboxes next to all the dock A stuff, which happens to be that one and this one. We're going to select the actions menu and add to batch. Now we have this pop up over here in the pop up in the add to field. We want to select a new batch transfer to create a new one. I'm going to set the responsible person over here to myself. And if I were creating this batch for a later date, I'd tick the draft checkbox right there. Since I need this batch now, however, I'm going to select confirm and boom, I've created the batch. So looking over here to our vehicle field, remember, this happens to be a dock A batch transfer. So we're going to select our Tacoma because we need a truck. And immediately the truck's weight and volume capacity automatically update, showing how much space this batch uses versus what's available. F oh no, my orders are too heavy. Let's investigate which order is causing the issue inside of our detailed operations tab over here. Hmm, everything seems small, carrots aren't that big, but... Would you look at that? I happen to be carrying and transporting pumpkins. Well, oh dear, I'm so sorry, Charlie Brown, but we got to get rid of that. So how do we get rid of that, though? I'm going to remove it from our transfers tab over here. And if you recall, that one happened to be warehouse order 57. Let's take a look for that one. All right, it's the bottom one. We're just going to take this X right there. And boom, all of that is done. After clicking our manual save button up at the top, <clears throat> would you look at that, oh doers? 80 and 90%. Everything fits on our truck. So now we'll send that removed order on the other pickup truck that we have. Okay, so now that the batch transfer is ready, let's prepare this truck for delivery. So if you'll notice, we have this map button over here, and it's only available when the batch happens to already be in progress. This shows all customer addresses on a map. Clicking on the map button, it well, it reveals a map with pinpoint icons for the addresses. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can do whatever you need to for all of these things. You can also click on a specific transfer number and you notice there's details about the delivery order. If you wanted to, you can also view this inside of Google Maps. When you select that button over there, a Google Maps route will be generated starting from my warehouse's location and direct us to the drop off locations. I can also drag and reorder the two middle icons for locations to figure out the most gas efficient route. And that's pretty convenient. And there you have it. Today we learned how the dispatch management system helps us track truck capacity and how to prepare badges for delivery. That's it for today, O'Doers. I'm going to see you next time.